My name is Eric Coslin, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Systems, and I will present and demonstrate how the Cisco Next Generation Firewall can be integrated with the Cisco Identity Services Engine. Three points of integration will be covered in this presentation. Using the Identity Services Engine as a passive identity provider for the Next Generation Firewall, Rapid Threat Containment, and the use of security group tags. Notice that posture assessment, another important role of ICE with any connect, will not be covered in this presentation. ICE is the access controller for the network and communicates with the switches and wireless LAN controllers. The FMC or Firepower Management Center manages the firewalls. And a key thing that ICE can do is send information to the FMC that can be used in policies, such as the IP to user mappings and ICE metadata, including the device type and something called security group tags that we'll cover in depth. The device type allows you, for example, to have a policy that only applies to, say, Apple devices or Samsung devices. So what are these security group tags? They are metadata that's actually embedded in the frame of the traffic for supported switch infrastructures. And starting with 6.5, these can be used for both the source and destination in a matching criteria for access policy rules. Now the tag doesn't actually have to make it to the firewall. It's possible that your infrastructure doesn't support tags on all of the intermediate switches. So ICE can use something called the SGT Exchange Protocol or SXP to communicate the IP to user mappings to the FMC. The FMC with its forensic and analytic capabilities can also direct ICE to take action based upon its conclusions. For example, it can have ICE direct a switch to shut down a switch port or to start tagging traffic from a device with a quarantine systems SGT. Let's drill down on the passive identity provider configuration. So here you can see that we have a rule in our access policy that says members of the HR group are not allowed to use SSH. And uh, let's show how we can integrate with ICE to get the identity of the endpoints users. So let's go to the identity sources and you'll notice that we're deprecating the older SourceFire user agent or Cisco Active Directory agent, and you will get a warning with 6.5. Eventually it will not be supported. So let's go to Identity Services Engine and tell the FMC where ICE is, of course. And authentication is done by using a certificate. We need to trust the certificate that ICE will provide so let's upload uh, the CA certificate uh, for the certificate authority that ICE will be using in this lab. Typically, we use the same certificate for MNT. MNT is beyond the scope of this presentation. We also need a client certificate for the FMC, it has to be signed by a certificate authority that ICE trusts. And of course, we need both the certificate and the private key. Now let's perform the test. And the logs here are very useful, particularly if you have a failure. So you should maybe get used to what they look like. But in the case of a success, they don't really provide much critical information. 
Notice we're getting a warning that the user agent will no longer be available now that we've configured ICE. All right, so now we've convinced ICE that this jump box is a switch. So I'm going to send a bunch of radius uh, messages to ICE about logging in and logging out. And let's actually look on the FMC and see if that information was communicated from ICE. And you can see that it is. We have four users and we have both login and log out information. Now as a test, let's see if we can actually block the HR group from using SSH. So first let's try Ira. Ira is not in the HR group, so he should be allowed to use SSH. And sure enough, we can see that we are being permitted. There's no reason to log in. But let's become Harry. Harry is a member of the HR group. So let's change the IP address and try logging in as Harry. You can see that SSH is blocked. Let's move on to rapid threat containment. This is where the FMC will tell ICE to take action based upon certain information. Now, if you look, we have a malware correlation policy, and this will be triggered if an endpoint encounters malware. We won't go into the details of the remediation configuration since it's a bit lengthy. So let's now add a rule for quarantined systems. And for convenience, we'll do SSH again. SSH is being very easy to test. So what we're going to basically say is if you're quarantined, and you will be quarantined if you've encountered malware, let's block SSH as an application, which means it doesn't matter what port you try to use SSH on. So here's the key point. We only want this rule to match if the security group tag, notice some, we could also do it based upon device ID or some combination of those criteria. But if the security group tag is set to quarantined systems. So we'll block, block with reset is better for the purpose of demonstrations and we'll log the information. All right, so there's our rule, and we do have to deploy, because it's a policy change, to the appropriate device or devices. And I will use a bit of time lapse, you could say, to make sure that we don't wait too long for the deployment. But we'll get the information about how long the deployment's taking. And it's not so bad. It's a minute and 27 seconds. All right, let's see if this works. So for this, I need to have a switch listening to ICE. So I'm going to open up a radius listener on the jump box, which ICE thinks is a switch. So ICE has someone to talk to. I'm going to become Ira again. And as before, Ira is allowed to use SSH. But what if Ira encounters malware? So let's go try to download some malware. Naturally, the malware was blocked, but something much more important happened. You see, I sent a radius message to the switch. And now if we do a COA, change of authorization on the switch, Iowa should no longer be able to use SSH.
and you can see the quarantine system tag has been assigned. You can also see the device types of the various users. This was achieved by having the radio simulator send certain MAC addresses to ICE. Let's move on to security group tags. And let's go back to the integration of ICE. And as you can see, just to remind you, we are configured to use the session directory topic, but we are not currently using SXP. Now, I don't want to turn this into an ICE configuration demo, but I wanted to show some key things that you have to change on ICE to get this feature to work. So we have to publish the SXP mappings to uh, the topic. So that will be required. And we need a uh, policy services node, PSN. Since this is a standalone deployment of ICE, ICE will be itself the policy services node and we have to enable SXP on it in that role of being a node. We also need a device, even if it's a dummy device, so that we can have a device that's enabling the SXP publication, even though they're static mappings. So we create a dummy device here. And now if we look at the IP uh, mappings. Notice the device is offline, but that doesn't matter. We can actually see that we're publishing the mappings for the uh, contractor and for the development server. Now on the FMC, we can subscribe to SXP topic. And as you can see, it was successful. We could analyze the logs if there was a problem with that. And let's save. All right, well, let's uh, create a policy rule using those tags. The policy rule is going to be quite simple. We're just going to say contractors can't go to the development servers. So we can call this block contractors. We can put it right at the top so it's easier to troubleshoot. And here's the key point. We're going to use these tags for the source and destination criteria for matching this rule. So something from the contractors going to the development servers should be blocked. And we might as well log it while we're blocking it. And let's deploy that policy. Again, a little bit of time lapse to get through the policy deployment. And now let's test this. So we're going to run some WGETs with various sources and destinations. This is a sanity test. This should go through because that's not a development server. Here's the traffic that should be blocked and we see it is blocked. But if we go to 202, we will see that we are allowed to go there. Now we want to change that. We want to say, what if 202 becomes a development server? Or what if we've got a new contractor coming in or some other change? So let's go to the static mappings and let's add a new mapping for a new development server, that 202.
And what we will see is that it does get published Since FMC is subscribing to SXP Topic, it will immediately receive that information and reprogram the firewall to block that traffic. And as you can see, the same request is now being blocked. And here you can actually see the blocks. And if we scroll over to the right, we can actually see the security group tags for both the source and destination for those connections. Thank you very much for your time.